in this video. Dorna CEO urges for tough penalties to ensure safety. More MotoGP riders share their views on Darren Binder's incident and Miguel Oliveira's first words after scary crash at Portimao. My name is Sankalp and this is your Racing News Fix. As the 2021 season comes close to an end, Dorna CEO Carmelo Espeleta took some time to review how 2021 has been for the sport. With a lot of incidents, especially in lower categories, the focus is certainly on safety as we look towards the 2022 season. Speaking about the newly introduced safety regulations focusing on rider age and grid sizes, Espeleta started. We have not reacted because there have been these incidents. We have been worried for a long time and we have had very good advisors in the safety committee who not only care about MotoGP but also about other categories. When these things happen, you become more sensitive. There was a boom of young people to get to the races, but it had long been thought that this should not be the case. It is not necessary for them to arrive so young. That is wrong. And in addition to age, which is important, for me it is very important that the mistakes are well penalized. Further explaining about what he means by well penalized, Espeleta continued. In addition to raising the age, which is very important, the most important thing is to give out sanctions. Sanctions need to be tightened a lot clearly. I don't think it is just Moto3 riders who basically don't listen. They do not pay attention to the championship rules because their team leaders does not either. Who is the one who tells them, of course with exception, to wait for a wheel? You have to punish them hard so that they know they cannot wait. I have not been involved with the stewards since 2015, but I am addressing my colleagues who is the FIM and I ask them to sanction, to sanction a lot, and the FIM agrees too. And speaking about the importance of handing out harsh penalties in younger categories, Espeleta continued, this sanction thing has to start in the lower categories. From the mini GP, they have to tell them that not everything is worth it, and the same in Talent Cup and in the Rookies Cup. The goal is to ride past and beat others, but with rules. Whoever does not understand this has no place here. In the previous video, we already saw that Peko suggested introducing super license in MotoGP to ensure only deserving riders reach the premier class, while Joan Mir suggested harsher penalties to curb irresponsible behavior on track. Now more MotoGP riders have shared their views about the Moto3 incident involving Darren Bender. Ever diplomatic, recently crowned 2021 world champion, Fabio Quartararo maintained his diplomatic image and didn't pick a side and spoke about general Moto3 safety. Fabio said, It is difficult, but you need to be really careful when two guys are playing for the championship. There was no margin there, but it is a shame that it finished like that. But yeah, I don't really have a clear opinion about that. It is a big shame, but it is not for the first time. Denis Q had a two-race ban for what happened in Austin. Okay, it was a really scary crash, but this was also something similar. So I think they need to be really careful with Moto3. Being critical of Darren Bender, Valentino Rossi said, what happened in the race I think is not fair for Foggia because to finish the championship like this is very difficult. I think some riders like for example Binder who are always very 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 aggressive and sometimes make some mistakes like this and it is not fair to the other riders. Agreeing with Peko's super license idea, Franco Morbidelli said, A super license might be a good thing. To step up to MotoGP, you should have at least some kind of results or some kind of pedigree. That's for sure a good thought and a good point of view which I agree with. And sharing a critical view of Darren Bender, Anea Bastianini said, I think it was a really stupid mistake, especially if the rider you wanted to overtake is fighting for the world championship. So it was truly a scene not worthy of MotoGP. What scares me is that next year he will race with us. And echoing the feelings of his teammate Luca Marini said, Let's hope he gets his act together, because he was aggressive today and also throughout the season. Speaking with the other Moto3 riders, I realize that every year two or three riders stand out who are a little over the top. In any case, I hope he behaves better in MotoGP. And in the dying stages of Algarve GP, Iker Lecona lost the front while overtaking Miguel Oliveira and the crash left Miguel lying in the gravel trap before being stretched away. Thankfully, we saw Miguel on his feet a few minutes later but given the severity of impact, he was taken to the hospital and we did not hear much from him or about him after the race. After all the health checkups and a good night's sleep, we finally heard from Miguel. He said, I went to the hospital after the race for a medical check. All the tests have not revealed any injuries, nothing has been discovered, so that is good news. But I have to observe all the symptoms that may appear in the next few days. So far, however, everything looks good. Further speaking about the crash, Miguel continued, It was a pity, because yesterday's race went much better than in all the sessions before. I was hoping for a top 10 result after a really excellent start. The crash was of course a disappointment, but now we are looking ahead to the future. Hopefully we will be able to achieve a respectable season finale in Valencia. 
If you made it till here, let me know by giving this video a big thumbs up. To stay up to date on all things MotoGP, hit the subscribe button and don't forget the notification bell. Here are two more videos which you might enjoy. My name is Sankal and I'll be back with another video very soon.